Okay, so we're going to do a quick bit of discussion on our friend the op amp and why why op amps make good drivers. So first, we have this circuit that you saw in your first lab and you looked at it and you said, okay, well we take a forward connection here and then here we have V in at the input and V out here at the output and if you use our techniques from now in the lecture, you'd calculate H of S and H of S is equal to one all the time, always, and you ask yourself, why? Why on earth would you do this? Well, Let's take a look at some circuits in, that exist in the real world where you have a feminine equivalent at least that looks like this and this is 10k 10 kilo ohms. Now this kind of circuit often exists because it's really the feminine equivalent of some very small current source that you might build and these small current sources are everywhere in sensors. You'll find them in guitars You'll find them in light detectors, and you'll also find them in temperature detectors, and in fact you'll find them in lots and lots of detectors. So, <coughs> if you take such a feminine equivalent, say V in, and your 10K here, and say you wanted to drive a speaker or some other high power piece of equipment, which would have, say, 8 ohms as its input resistance, then what you're going to find out is that this V out here, if you measure it here, is going to be roughly, if you look at this voltage divider, it's going to be roughly this fraction. So if you have a very small output voltage, you're not going to see a lot of power into this resistor. So let's go back to that voltage follower circuit we saw before, where you say minus and plus, except that I wrote that wrong, minus and plus, and the minus side gets the feedback. And then we have that same 10K resistor here, and that same V in. So this is exactly the same thing that we had as our sensor part. And plug it into the exact same load that we had. Then this, if you look at the real model of the <coughs> op amp, what you'll see is that you have some R out, and some 8 ohm resistance that we had before. And that fraction is going to look more like 8 divided by 8 plus RO. And for a good op amp, this is going to be you know, in the neighborhood of 1 to 2 ohms. And so this is going to go close to V out equal to V in, or this was V out. So you went from getting very little voltage to getting a lot of voltage just with this op amp as a voltage follower and it's not really doing a lot except it is getting you the gain you need. So there are other uses for these follower circuits. One is in this adder circuit that I'm going to show you where you can take two signals coming in, V1 and V2 let's call them. So if we take V1 and V2, and we put these in these followers, just as before, although I flipped them over, it is topologically the same. And then we put them both through some series resistance here, we'll call these R, and then join them together, short those together, and then put another resistor, let's say that's R maybe, and feed that as one of is the input to this inverting amplifier stage here. We're going to see that V out is going to equal V1 plus V2. Well, except that it's going to be minus sign. But we've added these two voltages together. So if you have one voltage signal and another voltage signal, you're now adding them together. You'll see this done all the time in analog circuits. One place you could do this is in a guitar which we mentioned earlier. So you take these pickups, which reach these voltage circuits with, you know, these 10K 
Ohm series resistances. We hooked each one of those up to one of these followers. We each one of these up to one of these followers. We take those followers, we put them together with these resistors, and then sum these to create the forward output, which is exactly what's happening in your amplifier for your electric guitar. <coughs> now, an adding circuit can also be used in a similar configuration to create an analog to digital or digital to analog converter. So you say you have one digital bit, two digital bits, three three digital bits, and I keep saying three, and four digital bits. So if you have four digital bits and you have resistors going from each one of them to that adding node that we showed earlier, then what you will see at the output is D0 plus D1 plus D2 plus D3 at the output. So V out equals that. Now, if you make this R and this 2R and this 4R and this 8R, then you'll get D1 as a half, D2 as a quarter, and D3 as an eighth. And so this becomes your least significant bit, and this becomes your most significant bit, and the output is going to be a voltage waveform where if this were a number, it would scale to that digital output. So there's another use, use for the op amp adder circuit. You can also build a graphic equalizer in much the same way. The graphic equalizer circuit means you just have one filter, and then another filter, and then another filter, and so on. Give each one of them a resistance to that summing node from that adder adding amplifier. Connect them all to the same input. And then as you alter each filters, and if you make each filter correspond to a different band, so these are all band pass filters, and then make each one of these resistors variable, you'll be varying the amount of current that comes from each one of these filter inputs, changing the amount they contribute to the final output, and creating that characteristic graphic equalizer where you can take each band and move it according to one of the slider knobs on each of these resistances. So I think that's probably enough applications to convince you of the usefulness of an operational amplifier. So remember, the op amp is your friend. <laughs>